Hey, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Today, I want to talk to you about how I plan a hike. How do you plan a hike? How do you plan your first hike? How do you plan a hike in an area that you've never been? How do you find cool places to hike in places nearby you? I think that these are great questions. Of course, the internet has helped immensely with this process. Uh, it used to be you'd have to just buy some topo maps and just hope that one of those dotted lines on the map was going to be a good one. Or maybe you'd spend $20, $30 on a guidebook and have hundreds and hundreds of pages of information that didn't end up being useful to you, but you did find that that one trail that turned out to be good. Um, of course, now we can basically do a walkthrough video of most popular trails, and there are so many great resources online that will help you plan your hike. Now, I don't have it all figured out. I'm going to be telling you in this video how I currently plan a hike, but part of the reason that I was interested in starting up this collaboration was I wanted to see how other people planned hikes, because they might have some great ideas that I've never thought of. So I've asked a couple of my hiker YouTube buddies to do similar videos detailing how they plan their hikes, and I will put links to those in the description below. Make sure you click on those and check them out as well, because I certainly do not know everything. If you have some steps that I left out, feel free to leave a comment down in the comments section because, you know, we're all here, we're all learning, we're all here to support each other. I am not telling you how you should plan a hike. This is just how I do it. Take from it what you will. And uh, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and jump on the on-screen display so that you can follow along with me as I plan my hike. Okay, so in this scenario, I am planning on going to Yosemite and I am going to plan out a hike there. So I'm going to begin by going to All Trails. Now, you need to understand that All Trails is a sort of database of user-generated information. These are not professionally curated trails. Uh, anybody can create a map. They can call it whatever they want. They can rename trails. So you do have to be careful about how much trust you're putting into All Trails, but because it is user-generated data, and it tends to overlap as more and more people record themselves doing certain hikes, the information is generally reliable enough. But you do need to be careful of things like looking for trail names because somebody can just make up a trail name. You won't necessarily see it on a sign out there. So I'm gonna get on all trails here, and I am going to take a look at Yosemite National Park. So this has taken me to a best of, and as you can see, I've been to a few of these. Um, let's say I wanted to look at Sentinel Dome. This looks pretty good. Actually, that's a picture of Half Dome taken from Sentinel Dome. So I see that this is a 2.1 mile heavily trafficked out and back with 456 feet of elevation gain. That does not sound terribly interesting, but I do like that view. So what I'm gonna do is look and see what's around there. All right, so this is the route that somebody has planned. It starts and stops right here. Looks like probably just parking on the side of the road. And there is your 2.1 mile out and back. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. And so what I see here is Taft Point and Glacier Point. I've heard of those. This is looking somewhat interesting. I wonder if I can maybe link these trails together. So what you can do on all trails is basically just do a search. I'm gonna do Taft Point Sentinel Dome. Now you have to keep in mind that because these are user generated, this is not necessarily a standard trail. This is just something somebody did and they gave it this name. So when you pull into the trailhead, you're not necessarily going to see Sentinel Dome and Taft Point Loop. That, that may not even be a thing, but this is a route that is possible. So when I look at this, I see this is 5.1 miles. That's a little better. 1122 on the elevation gain, and I would see Taft Point and Sentinel Dome. Looks like a nice little walk along the valley here. I'm not sure why they didn't go out there. That's where I'd probably want to go. Um, but this is looking a little bit more legit, and I see Glacier Point is still possible. I'm going to add in Glacier Point, Taft Point, Sentinel Dome, Glacier Point. Uh, and now you see... Again, here are all these user-generated things. Uh, Taft Point via Glacier 
point. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, well, that's part of it too. So basically you see the problem. Nobody has really done the hike that I want to do, but I am getting some idea that if I was to make it from Glacier Point all the way to Taft and see Sentinel Dome along the way, I'm looking at about 7.5 miles. Now that would be an out and back. Maybe I want to make this into some kind of loop. So at this point, because I don't see what I'm looking for exactly on all trails, I'm going to switch over to another app. Now, Personally, I like all trails for ideas. I like to just get ideas of places I might want to go, but it is not the easiest thing to use to create your own routes or just to gauge mileage. So what I'm going to do is switch over to the app that I use most frequently on trail, which is called Gaia. Now, if you go to Gaia.com, you get some kind of weird, like new age looking website. So I'm going to GaiaGPS.com. And this syncs up really nicely with my phone app. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to type in Yosemite yep, National Park. I just want to get close. I kind of know what I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to hone in here. Just in case you're wondering, this is a route that somebody else created using waypoints. And I have imported that data into Gaia so that I could see what it looks like. But what I'm looking for is over here. So... You can see a previous hike that I've done in purple here. That's a recording that I made. But this isn't exactly what I want because I didn't include Glacier Point and I would actually like to do all of those. So what I can do here is go over to Route and I can create my own. So this is going to be uh, Glacier Taft Sentinel. All right. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Make sure I can see the whole thing. Okay, so here we go. I click it and I start dragging this thing around. So by clicking these known points, it's having a pretty easy time picking out the trail. But then I want to go back. Let's see what it does here. Yep, good. Um, I want to go to Roosevelt Point and I'm going to take the closer to the edge trail rather than the more safe one that it looks like someone else used. And I want to get, let's see if it can take me all the way to here. I want to get all the way to here. Great. I want to go out to Glacier Point. Good. I want to come back, maybe on a slightly different trail. And I want to get all the way up here to the summit of Sentinel Dome. And then I want to come back to the trailhead. Nope, not by the road. I can grab this. There we go. Let's stay on trail and we'll finish here. Oop, no, I want to add a waypoint. All right, so what do we got? This thing says that if I were to do this route, I'm going to go ahead and save this, I would be going 7.26 miles with a 2,122 foot elevation gain. Now that sounds a little more like what I am looking for. So the nice thing is once I've saved this, I have access to it on my phone and I can download this map, which means that I can use my phone in airplane mode, save the battery, but I can still run the GPS and I can actually use this route to see exactly where I am. So I can just click this and now the topo map changes to this really cool looking satellite view. So at this point, I would probably be fine with, with moving on, but I do want to show you one other app that I like a lot, and that is CalTopo. Now, CalTopo started off as SarTopo, which is Search and Rescue. Um, it is a amazing and free collection of numerous points of data and topo maps that uh, let you get some pretty fine detail. I'm going to go into Yosemite, see what it gives me here. Okay, where am I? Looks like kind of the uh, northeast. I'm going to back up. All right, as you can see, there's a lot of data on here. You have tons of things that you can toggle on and off, but let's just go to what I was looking at. It's a little too close. All right, so Glacier Point is right here. There's Sentinel Dome. There's Taft Point. I can do a similar thing that I did with Gaia by clicking on this ruler, clicking distance, and I can begin, well, let's start here at the parking lot. 
I can begin once again tracing a route. I want to go to Taft Point. I want to come back here. I like how it actually builds the trail as you go so that you can be sure you're on the route that you want. And you can just click anytime you want to on here. Once you see the trail, you know you're in the right spot. There it is. I'm going to come all the way back up to here. Oh, I don't want to do that weird little spur. Summit. I'm going to come back down. And all the way to the parking lot. Double click, and I get 7.42 miles. So, seems like all of these are coming in at a pretty close estimate of being the same. So, you know, 7 point, say, 3, 7.5, 7.4. Pretty good ballpark estimate of how far this is going to be. Again, Gaia, I like it better because it also gives me my elevation change. So, you know, 2,000 feet over 7.5 miles, not bad at all. Um, the next thing I would usually do is I want to check and see what the weather is supposed to be like the day I'm going. So I'm going to jump over to AccuWeather. That just happens to be my personal favorite. Hasn't steered me really wrong yet. I'm going to go to Yosemite Valley. I'm going to go to Daily because I'm planning on doing this Tuesday. Tuesday, high of 79. Okay, welcome to California. Uh, <laughs> it is springtime and it's going to be 80. Um, it's going to have a pretty extreme UV index. There's only going to be a little bit of wind, um, but zero possibility of thunderstorms or precipitation and about 10-11% cloud cover. So this is going to be a fairly hot, warm, clear day with not a lot of wind and pretty much no chance of rain. Now, I don't go on hikes without the 10 essentials. I always assume that something could go wrong. Now, on a hike like this, I'm probably not going to die if I just get a little rained on, but this is probably the kind of situation where I would still toss in my most lightweight rain gear. But looking at this helps because this tells me that this is definitely going to be a shorts and t-shirt day and not necessarily a multi-layer type situation. Another thing I like to do sometimes is there's this uh, hike difficulty calculator, and I just like to put in what the plan is here. What was it? 7521. And, uh, oh, score of 19. So this is, uh, this is difficult. This is at the uh, bottom end of the difficult hike, uh, doing seven and a half miles with about 2,000 feet of elevation gain. So, um, that's just like a fun little extra that you might want to do. So let's say I'm sitting here on the hike difficulty and I'm going, ah, 2,100 feet, that looks rough. Like, where, where is this? What is, is this all at once? Is this going to be like a killer section or is it just overall? I'm going to go back to Cal Topo. They have some really cool base layers that you can throw on here. So for example, slope angle shading. Uh, this is going to look a little crazy, but when you click this, what it does is it shows you the intensity of the elevation gain and change. So basically any of this purple and red stuff, um, you fall off here, you go and die. Um, Taft Point looks almost exactly straight down. So if that gives you any idea of what you're looking at right over here, this is some extremely steep area. Walking along this is going to be a bit of a clencher, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, Sentinel Dome is very steep on the uh, western end, but not really too bad over here. And as you can see, although you're standing on some pretty intense edges like Glacier Point or going along here, this section, walking out to Taft Point, by and large, you are in the clear throughout almost all of this hike. There's a little bit of a section here that's going to be steep, but for the most part, this is going to be a pretty much cruiser of a trail. You also want to look a little carefully here because although this is in the red, if you zoom in a bit, you see that this trail doesn't cross uh, any contour lines the entire time that it's in the red zone. And what that means is that this is a steep slope with a trail that goes along it. So this section shouldn't be a problem either, but there should be some pretty cool views. Now, if you turn this off, you can go over here to another layer 
let's say I put in my global imagery. Okay, so now I've got a nice solid satellite image of the route. But what I can do is use this little slider right here and I can merge the two layers. So at zero, I'm back at my topo map and at 100, I'm at the satellite. But if I want to kind of get a visual picture of what the topography is, I can just gradually bring the map in and get some idea of what is really going to be happening here. Okay, so I've decided this is the hike I'm going to go on. Next thing to do is go over here to All Trails and click Directions. This is going to open up Google Maps. And the nice thing about this is that instead of just typing in Yosemite and having no idea where I'm going to end up, this should actually take me to the trailhead. If I just type in Yosemite Valley, according to this, it's going to take less than two hours and it's only an 80 mile drive. But Yosemite Valley is quite huge. I've seen it take an hour to get from the bottom of the valley all the way up and all the way around to Glacier Point. Although it's not too far as the crow flies, it is a very long drive, and especially with valley traffic, this can be considerable. So I always like to kind of finish off my planning by seeing what the drive time is gonna be like, because I'm gonna to have to figure this into my total day time. If it's gonna take me two hours and 36 minutes and I'm driving 100 miles, double that, that's going to be over five hours of driving, and I'm going to have to include those five hours in my day if I'm not planning on spending the night. So that is how I plan a hike. All right, I hope this video has been helpful and informative to you. If it has, would you mind giving it a like? And please subscribe to Backcountry Pilgrim if you're into hiking, camping, and backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. Click that bell if you want to know when new videos drop. Until next time, I'm Doug. Thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to get on all trails here. And I'm going to take a look at you. Yeah. So I'm going to get on all trails here and I'm going to take a look at